All right, let us look at general functions of absolute value. So, huh? So, um, we talked about this yesterday. We said that uh, transformation in general looks like this, right? Now, we can change that f of x, which is that basic parent function, to any function we want. And I'm going to keep telling, teaching you different functions until we finish all the parent functions. But they're kind of all going to follow the same idea. So the first function we learned yesterday was the linear function. So then basically, a linear function is just an x. So th this is kind of the general idea. I change an f of x to just an x. The second function I showed you yesterday was x squared. So then that would be changing that f of x to an x squared. But everything else is the same. Like what's the f to? Uh, f, f of x is just a general. Like generally speaking, function is f of x. But it doesn't represent anything. Oh. So on some of your warm up, you start writing f of x. That's not what I'm looking for. When it tells you what that function is, you change that f of x to that function. So please don't write f of something again. OK, so today we are going to learn the absolute value function. Absolute value function, the parent function is y equals absolute value x. So this is absolute value function, so absolute value x. What do you guys think the transformation equation will look like? y equals what? Like I'm changing that f of x to an absolute value. So then what? a, a, a times? Uh huh. <laughs> I said it's going to defer to Aiden. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, correct. So every time I teach you a new parent function, it's all going to follow that same trend for the general transformation rules. Okay? So the general equation is y equals a times absolute value x minus h and then plus k. Now, we never really talked about absolute value function. So if you don't know how it looks like, we always want to make a table so we can see how that looks like. We always want to put in some negative numbers, 0 definitely, and then 1, 2, so some positive numbers, and so that we can see what this function looks like. If you put a negative 2 into the absolute value function, what number will come out? 2. Because it changes everything to positive, right? OK, so. The rest of the numbers are like this, and then we can take those values and graph them. Okay, so in general, it looks like that. Now, this is not going to be a curved function. This is going to be straight lines, so it's going to be a V. Okay, let's see how much you remember from the transformation. So we have three main letters, A, H, K. Which one represents vertical translation? K. K. So when K is greater than 0, what happens? Goes up. Goes up, correct. And then K is less than 0, we're going to go down. Which letter represents the horizontal? That's the left and right. H. Very good. So X minus H is going to go which direction? Right. And then x plus h is going to be left. <laughs> OK. Next, we only have one last letter left. That is a. And a has to do with stretch and compress, but the absolute value of a. So absolute value of a is greater than 1. Is it stretch or compress? Stretch. Good. Stretch. And then when a is between 0 and 1, it's going to compress. The last thing we're going to talk about is reflection. We have two kinds of reflection, x-axis or y-axis. X-axis reflection is the negative on the outside or inside? Outside. Correct. So negative is on the outside of the function. Y-axis, negative is on the inside. OK, let's talk about our absolute value graph a little bit. Um, you can see that absolute value graph is a V, and then so that means every V has a very 
low point or Okay, so we have a absolute value function, that's the V, and then on that V, you will always have a lowest point or a highest point, basically a tip. This part we call vertex. That tip of the function, we call that vertex. And through that vertex is going to be a line where if you fold the function across that line, it will be exactly the same. So that line is called uh, yes, line of symmetry. Now, how are you going to figure out where the vertex is? Vertex is going to be part of your equation, and it's easy to find. That vertex is HK. So this is how I tell people to remember HK. Remember Hello Kitty? Whoops. Oh, I always spell Hello Kitty wrong. Hello Kitty uh, or Hong Kong? HK. H comes before K. So that's how the point works. HK. Hmm. Okay. I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Okay, the vertex is HK here. <sighs> All right, now let's talk about the line of symmetry. Line of symmetry is this vertical line that cuts across this absolute value graph. Uh, vertical lines, vertical lines are is it straight. <laughs> Thank you. <Okay>. Vertical, <laughs> yes. Is it going to be an X equals two equation or Y equals two equation? X equals. Yes, very good. Now the question is X equals to what? It goes through the x part of my vertex. Zero. Um, in this case, it's zero, yes. But uh, if I start moving it, it's going to go through the h. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I already told you. It's going to go through h. <laughs> the x part of my vertex. My vertex is h, k, which represents x, y. So it's going to go through h because that's the x part. OK, so let's write that down here x equals h. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take an equation, figure out the transformation, the vertex, the axis, the symmetry, and then we're going to graph it. Before you do all that, the first thing you always should do is ask yourself, what is the parent function? What is the parent function of this equation? Y yeah, y equals absolute value x. So that's the parent function. So from the parent function, what happened to this graph? A five, a five right, right three. three, correct. All right, next, vertex. Uh, this may be a little hard when you see it at first. I'm going to show you how to do it. So y equals a times x minus h plus k is that general transformation equation. We are going to try to figure out where hk is from here. And all you're going to do is do some matching. So what number is h? Three. Oh, you guys are so smart. Three. OK? <laughs> this is x minus h. This is x minus 3. So then h has to be 3. OK, what number is k? Five. five. Very good. So the vertex is at five, uh, 3, 5. Remember that axis of symmetry is x equals h. So then what is the axis of symmetry for this? Um, three. Yes, x equals 3. All right. How does this transformation actually work? So basically, they're saying take this original function. You're going to move it up 5 and then write 3. If I were to move this around, sorry, on my app, I cannot do it. On your notability, you can just like grab and move it. But basically, I'm going to take every single point, and I'm going to go right 3, up 5. And then I'm going to graph it. So this is kind of the whole idea of moving a parent function. OK, however, that is too slow. We are going to fi find a faster way to graph this. So. What we want to do is just figure out the vertex, figure, figure out the axis of symmetry. The last thing we're going to do is figure out A. A is kind of like our slope. One number is A. One. OK, so we're going to start at the vertex. Three, five. 
And then we know that axis of symmetry is going to go straight through that point. We're going to graph the slope. And I call it slope because it's not a linear line. So there's not a really slope, but it tells us how we're going to graph it. Slope is 1, so we're going to go up 1 over 1 and then draw that. Please don't draw the other way down because this is an absolute value graph. You do need a vertex. What you're going to do next is reflect it over. And then that's it. That's your graph. Start with the vertex, graph your slope, and then reflect it to the other side. Let's try another one. This one's a little harder. OK, let's compare to our original general function. Uh, before then, let's check the transformation. Let's start with Jerry. What is the parent function? What is the original function before I start moving it? You have three choices. Y equal huh? mm -hmm. X plus. Mm, no, there's no more no plus. <laughs> you don't know. Okay, Brooklyn. Plus three. I don't know. What's the parent function? Parent function. Yes. Y equals absolute value x. Yeah, absolute value x. Okay, absolute value x is my parent function, and then I'm gonna start moving. Uh, Jiwan, tell me one transformation. So, one down. Huh? Down? How much? One. Yes. So down one. Uh, Kendrick, give me another one. Uh, uh, left three. Yes, left three. Lauren, another one. Um, compressed. Mm hmm Compress 0.5, let's say one half. And then Josiah, give me the last one. Over yes, reflection over x-axis. Okay, so this one we have three uh, four transformations. Uh vertex. What where do you guys think the vertex is? HK. Three negative one. Three negative one, no. Negative three. Negative three, negative one. So this is the tricky one. If you try to match it up, x minus h, well, this is not a minus. So in order to change it to a minus, we would actually have to do x minus minus 3 to get to that positive. Therefore, h is minus 3. If that is very hard for you to remember, just think it's always the opposite sign. OK, where's the axis of symmetry? x equals what? h, so what number is h? Negative three. All right. What number is our a? It's kind of our slope. Negative, negative one half. Okay. Take the negative along with it. All right. So we're gonna graph at three negative one. I'm sorry. Negative three negative one. That's the vertex, and we know that the axis of symmetry goes through that vertex, and we're going to kind of graph it with our slope. So it's gonna be down one over two. Down one over two. Uh, yeah, question. So, so like transformations happening to that original thing. Correct. Would the v only starting from zero? Yes, correct, oh. correct. And then we're going to reflect it over on the other side, and that is our graph. Okay? Yes? No? Yes. Okay, we probably just need a little more practice. Let's have you guys try one. Let me check it. Okay, so the transformation is right, five, stretch, three and then down three vertex is at five negative three axis of symmetry please write x equals five and not just five five is just a number we're talking about a straight line so it has to have an equation uh vertex is five negative three so we're going to be here the slope is three because up three over one sorry Oof. horrible graph okay so it looks like this we're now going to go backwards. I show you a graph. You tell me what the equation is. So write an equation for this following function. So you need to figure out the vertex. What is the slope when you look at it? And then you can come up with the equation. So in this uh, graph, where is the vertex? Uh, 
Good, zero, zero. What is the slope when you try to count, calculate? Two. Two. Okay, so now the equation is always y equals a times uh, absolute value x minus h plus k. We put all the, those numbers in. h, k is zero, zero. Slope is a, which is two. So that is two absolute value x. There, the rest of it is zero, so it's not necessary to write it. Okay, let's have you guys try the next two. Should be pretty easy, but please be careful on number three. Uh, what did we stop on last time? Uh, Jeff, uh, number two, vertex. Uh, two more. Good. Uh, Heller, slope. One. Mm -hmm. Daniel, equation. Uh, y is equal to absolute value x minus two plus one. Good. All <coughs> right, Matt, vertex, number three. Negative one. Mm -hmm. uh, Ellen, slope. You didn't finish. Uh, Nick, did you get the slope? I didn't start it back to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So negative one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyone get the equation? Yes. Uh, y equals negative one absolute value x plus one plus one. Yes. Okay. Um, let's do one thing. We are going to do some practice. All right. Let's do this. Okay. So I'm going to give you a function. Graph it. Show me. And I'm going to tell you if it's right or not. First one, easy one. Craft that one. Is it too small? Okay, that's good. 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 Oh, no, good. Good. No. Good. Jeff? Jeff. Oh, wait, wait. I, uh, no. Yes. 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 Did I see Jeff's? Okay, yes. Okay, good. So your vertex should be negative one, zero. So that should be like this. Okay, let's go into more, a little harder mode. Not that much. Uh, let's put the two in front. Make it a little funny, funner. The marker's dead? That's too bad. Uh, let's do this one. Oh, you changed it. <laughs> Your marker's dead? It's like, like sometimes it'll show up. Huh? What? Oh, okay, good. Good. No. Good. 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 Your slope is a little off. Good? Or you, you didn't? Oh, I changed it. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, good. It's a little bit strange, but oh no, wrong direction. Okay, good. <laughs> That's exactly what I just said, too. Uh, yes. Okay, so the vertex is now at 2, 3, and the slope is up 2 over 1. Okay, let's go into more advanced mode. Uh, but it's just kind of intermediate, not that bad. Uh, oh, no. It's oh, actually, no, it's I hope there's enough space to craft this. Mm hmm. Your vertex is... Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it's right. <laughs> Don't shake it. I can't see it. <laughs> Make it flat. Okay. Uh, okay, good. Good, good. Uh, mm, mm. Okay. Sorry. The slope was a... 
Oh, the slope is wrong. Okay, good, 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 good. People in the back, did I see it yet? Oh, the slope is wrong. Okay, good. Okay, so we are going to go negative 1, negative 3, that's the vertex, and then goes down 2 over 3. Good? Okay, next one. Now we're going to go into more of mid, like even more advanced mode than before. Yes, but you guys are smart. I think you can get it. I don't know You can do this. You can do this. You're good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good. Oh, no. <laughs> good. Ah, uh, slope is wrong. Uh, good. Slope is wrong. Good. No, wrong direction. No. <laughs> where where did the four come from? Uh slope is wrong. Slope is wrong. Okay, good. Good. Hmm, you went the wrong direction. Oh okay, good. What is the slope supposed to be? One half? So that becomes K. Yes, yes. Did you show me yet? I added it to slope. Okay, good. All right, so if we kind of change this around, uh, this will become Y equals 1 half, and then switch the X to the 3, and then plus 1. So kind of go back to normal, right? All right. Huh? I think it's no, you just move them around until you see the general form. Okay, so I'm going to show you one more. This is going to be lesson next week. So if we get it, lesson next week would be super easy. <laughs> okay. You have an idea. Try it. What do you do with inequality if you still remember? Oh. You got to do some shading, oh, right? Yeah. Oh. Mm. Wow, that's right. You have to shade it. You have to shade it. The question is where? That's where. I'm going to guess. Yeah, make a guess. It's less than, so think about what less than is going to look like. Oh, so close. You're going for this. Yes. Oh, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Wrong slope. Uh, you you shaded around side very close. Uh, yes. Um, no, the vertex, the the, the absolute value graph is wrong. <laughs> okay, very close, very close, very close. Yes. No, we are doing absolute value. Absolute value has to be so close, so close. Oh, okay. Very close. Uh, you guys know why it, it's wrong? All of you guys are super close. It's supposed to be plus one, so it's got to do the No, 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 no. <laughs> What's the difference between this and this? No, Oh. Oh, Between this, this, and this. It's a dotted line. Dotted line. Okay, I'm We're not equal to, so it has to be dotted. There we go. Uh, the, the, the graph has to be dotted. Uh huh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so vertex, yes, vertex is negative one. All right, negative two, negative one. And we're gonna go up one, up one. So basically, it's like this. However, it's not equal to, so we don't uh, put a solid line. It's less than, so we shade down. 